I've recently had another shot scrolling through the internet, and I think I finally struck some gold this time by purchasing a £35 RTX card all the way from China. So this right here is a package, but by now I'm sure that most of you who have been watching this channel for a while can tell exactly what that means. And that means that another package from China has arrived once again. So why don't we get round to opening this thing up and see what they've actually sent me this time. First of all, it's actually off to a good start with this package, which actually arrived better than most ones do. It actually declares that it's got a graphics card inside with a value of £35.54p, which is probably around what I actually purchased the thing off eBay for. And that's exactly where I got it from, because most things I tend to order, I order on eBay, so at least I'm protected somehow. With the grey packaging off, it seems I've actually gone to decent lengths to keep the packaging protected, possibly to make it less suspicious and actually look like you've got a good deal here. Anyway, underneath those two layers of foam, we had ourselves a rather few small dents along the top of this rather sad looking brown box, and a Chinese symbol that apparently translates to 2060, at least if Google Translate is to be believed. Either way, it does look like it's arrived okay. But when your packages come from the other side of the world on economy delivery, it's nice when they just arrive. Once we actually get inside the box, the quality seems to stay about the same level it was on the outside. The graphics card, or in this case the RT2060 as they called it when they sold it to me, is actually wrapped up in bubble wrap inside the box, with what seems to be a Molex to 6 pin connector and a blank CD. We will have to find out what's on there later on, not that I really want to run a dodgy blank CD from China. So what exactly have they sent us? Well this here is apparently the RT2060, a ray tracing compatible graphics card sold to me by a company going under the name Shenzhen Technology Co. Handily located in England apparently, somewhere in West Bromwich if you trust their eBay page. And I have to be honest, this doesn't actually look like the card you would expect when you actually purchase a card that's too good to be true. In fact, I've covered the last generation of scam graphics cards, and well, this looks absolutely nothing like them. In fact, if you want to find that video, I'll try and link it up wherever I did some 4K gaming on a scam to try and shake up the formula a little bit. In fact, it's actually got quite a classy design. But by now, at least I hope we've all established, this isn't actually an RTX 2060 that I got for £35. At least, I don't think we have, but why don't we actually take this apart and see what they're actually selling to people. The actual cooling design on these, although very basic, is effective at what it has to do. It's a thick old block of aluminium with a fan bolted on the top and held on with four screws. Now this card only has the one fan, whereas the last generation of scams always had two fans. But either way, what are they actually promising us? Well, I don't actually know all too much because the page the card was on has since been removed and I can't access it via my purchase listings. The only information we do currently have to hand is that I have the low resolution cached version of the page to show you, which isn't high enough resolution to actually make out any decent information, but I also have the tracking information to verify it's legitimate, not that the tracking code actually went anywhere other than telling me they sent it, but it did show up on eBay as proof that I bought something. Still, they allegedly promised us the full specifications of an RTX card, with the added bonus of having 2GB of RAM, which no RTX card does, but at the end of the day, what have we actually been sent specification wise? Well this here is definitely not an RTX 2060, however it's not actually a bad card, well at least it's not that bad. It is however a GTX 650 which although old was actually a semi decent buy a few years ago and is a huge step up over the last generation of scams which utilise the older Fermi architecture. They usually use the GTX 550 Ti and a GTS 450, some of which were so poorly configured that if you tried to run some games they would just crash and occasionally burn. In fact given the architecture the fans on mine stopped working and I'm pretty sure my card has burnt out by now. Which is what happened on a few people's apparently as the design was not very good. Yes they worked, but not brilliantly. Still this card was originally released back in 2012 based on the Kepler architecture. So it does in fact seem that the listing was a lie. It does not even in fact have 2 gigs of RAM which is a shame as it only has 1 gigabyte on board. It's meant to use around 65 watts under peak load, however they've also added a 6 pin connector that it won't function without. So let's find out what other weird stuff is going on here once we actually get it in a PC. Now quite an uncommon sight on the channel is my main PC which features a Ryzen 7 3700X and 32GB of DDR4 RAM and what would usually be an AMD Fury 
which is now going to be replaced by this fake RTX 2060. So we can establish this system is pretty much overkill and the performance we're going to be seeing is completely down to the card by itself. So let's find out just how well this card performs, because oh boy, we really need to see just what they've released onto the graphics card market. I'm gonna say that on the disc there are drivers located that are a few months out of date, provided you add a year onto that, they're from 2018, and are actually put down as being before the release of the RTX 2060, which is what the card actually does show up as in both GPU-Z and on NVIDIA's own auto-detect function on its website, where it'll promptly download the latest drivers. So with the card in my system and everything set up properly, why don't we see how well the card performs? As well, this is a pretty modern GPU, and I already know that you're going to be surprised by the following benchmarks. First off, with something running very impressively, we have the likes of CSGO running in 1080p with low settings and high shadows. My usual benchmarking settings that I often use, but this time we're running at 1080p. Because, well, the graphics card runs it absolutely fine. With a mixture of actual gameplay and some casual game modes, as well as running CSGO's built-in benchmark, no, it's a workshop benchmark, you know what I mean, all in all a very good experience, you could notice a few drops here or there when there were smoke effects going on, but we're running this on an 8 year old graphics card at the end of the day, not an RTX 2060, and I am very impressed. But if you think that was impressive, then we have a very modern release with Halo Reach from the Master Chief Collection, where we saw the game run absolutely fine with 1080p and the performance preset. I didn't even notice any quality downgrade really, and it ran really, really well. Now the card itself does actually support DirectX 12, and given the GTX 650 uses the same up-to-date drivers the RTX 2060 does, it's really no surprise they're actually seeing semi-passable performance. Sure, it's no RTX card so far but it's performing really well. In fact, this is how they could end up catching you out. Doom running with Vulcan had a few issues being captured, so I apologize for the poor capture quality. Either way, in 1080p with lower settings and a 50% render scale, we saw the game running really smoothly. It could fluctuate a little bit here or there, but mostly hovered around that 40fps figure, never really dropping to a stage where it was unplayable. And Vulcan was actually working on the card as well, so that's pretty damn impressive for a scam card. Usually the drivers where they change the name end up messing with any API that isn't DirectX, and our OpenGL definitely had issues on the last generation of scams, but here we are running Vulcan with a performance improvement, in fact, it was quite a noticeable performance improvement when I went to Vulcan, and it's running okay, so very easy to catch someone out so far. Now, finally we got somewhere where you might not notice that the card was in fact what you bought, as we had to drop the resolution down to 720p to make Skyrim Special Edition playable, likely to do with all the new fancy shaders the game has, and the fact that the card we're using only has 1GB of VRAM. Not exactly enough to play the game at high resolutions, but still, at 720p, the game was actually playable. I just don't know if I'd call it a great experience. However, if you didn't mind going back to the original release of Skyrim, you can move back to 1080p and the game will run okay with higher settings. There is of course the fact that the card can't handle a consistent 60fps and you'd need to lower the settings much lower than you'd expect to hit a constant 60, but I've always found that to be an issue with Skyrim and, you know, Bethesda's engine. Either way, it was a really good experience on the card and another surprise for us, so as long as you don't mind the older version of Skyrim, you can get away with running the game in full HD with pretty decent settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is where you can tell this card is really not what you bargained for. Now, don't get me wrong, it is very impressive for a £35 card to play this game in the first place, but this game has a DLSS option in the menu, and if you try and launch with either that or DirectX 12 enabled, the card just won't run the game, it will just crash from the get-go. In fact, DLSS is blanked off which shows you that the card doesn't work fine. Now, enabling DirectX 12 in some other titles that aren't Tomb Raider would also cause this card to crash, which really shows you that it's a fake, as these games shouldn't even try and launch on a standard GTX 650 and DirectX 12 mode. It's just one of those weird things where the games get confused with what card they're actually dealing with. Still, when you actually do get the game launched, the performance is indeed impressive. Now, another surprise at Full HD at a near-constant 60fps. I know GTA 5 is a well-optimized game, 
but look at the performance we're seeing on a scam card and if you don't want to call it a scam card this is just a GTX 650 at this point admittedly with some rather strange drivers but this is some crazily good performance at the end of the day and something that really did surprise me. I'd like to add that at lower resolutions you could turn the settings up but I think that just running the game in 1080p like this is impressive enough and the clarity of things is brilliant. And you've got to admit, something like this is definitely a passable experience, even at worst. Then of course, you know, we can't exactly make a video on a scam RTX 2060 without doing some real ray tracing. So here's Minecraft running with the ray tracing SUS shaders and well, in 360p we nearly saw a playable experience. The game did indeed look great even at this low resolution, but the frame rate was awful and we rarely saw anything smooth whatsoever. The game's resolution is so low that I did end up removing the frame times graph as it blocked off half the gameplay, especially with the spikes we were seeing. But the card is indeed capable of ray tracing, just not conventional or hardware accelerated ray tracing like a real 2060 is. Finally, we ended the test with Crisis. And yes, this scam card can indeed run the game with ultra settings as long as you don't mind a lower 720p resolution. Still impressive at the end of the day, but it is worth keeping in mind that the performance we're seeing is less about being a scam and really just the benchmarks on a GTX 650. So if you wanted to see how a GTX 650 did, then you've just seen it. But we'll touch on the performance of this card a bit more in a second. So the performance we actually saw was pretty damn impressive and other than a few exclusive RTX features not working, they've managed to set up the card in such a way so that it does nearly pass as the card it's claiming to be, other than the fact this card has nowhere near the real power of an RTX 2060, or no ray tracing hardware built in on board, but they've managed to keep the experience bug free enough to pass as a real card that you could buy and use. Even the inbuilt video encoder does in fact seem to work, which of course is shadow play or NVENC as I usually like calling it, and all the gameplay you're seeing in the background right now is actually recorded via NVENC, which worked absolutely fine. I tended to use OBS to test it, and honestly, I found zero problems here. I did also flash the card back to a real GTX 650, just to see if this weird hacked BIOS they're running made any real difference to the performance, other than a few stability improvements here or there, and really we saw nothing more than a few FPS gained here or there, and I didn't see really any improvements in most other areas. Likely both as an RTX 2060 and the older GTX 650 both run on the same modern Nvidia drivers, which wasn't often the case with the older scam cards, and those tended to be a little bit less stable as I've touched on and many other people have touched on. But either way, it definitely shows you those scammers are getting smarter. There we have it, the next generation of scam cards. And I mean, I am impressed. But given they've already taken the listing down for this card, and only a few have actually surfaced recently, it does seem like they're testing the waters for whether this new formula could actually work. And it does seem like they have a very compelling little scam, so do be very careful. These scams are not designed for people like me who understand tech. They've got a new design and a new graphics card at its core, and I imagine they'll be working on a few more iterations to try and make it seem more legitimate. Either that, or they could end up realising it's harder to fake an RTX card than a standard card, but we'll see. Either way, after flashing the card back to a GTX 650, I've ended up with a decent little card from the performance shown, and I also got a £30 refund, and for some reason they're going to send me a car stereo as an apology to make up for not refunding me the other £5 I spent. Bit strange, but I'll go with it, could make for an interesting video. We did also find that these Chinese companies are selling these cards as legitimate 650s. So if you were in some part of the world where it was difficult to get a used card and needed a new card that performed like one in the video, well that could make a very good purchase. But still, it shows you these scams are getting very smart. If you didn't understand tech and you saw this card listed, you could very well buy this card, run the latest drivers, Nvidia's telling you it's a 2060, your games are telling you it's a 2060, it seems to run alright, your shadow play's working, it just seems like you've got a card and you just aren't getting the performance you expected. Either way, that is where they're going to catch people out and I really hope this doesn't take off. So there we have it. Uh, the latest generation of scam cards and I hope you've all enjoyed watching this bit of a deep dive into it and the performance they're getting out of it. So I'm going to enjoy my new free graphics card, or free-ish graphics card, good night.
So, another scam. I know lots of people have covered these, but this is the new generation, and I might as well make it clear to people if these take off that they are scams. And it's not a good buy. If you like this video, you can always like and subscribe for more. Just looking to keep people safe when they're purchasing graphics cards, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.